Victor Joseph Prevost, also known as the Handsome Man or the La Chapelle Butcher, was born in Mormont, saint et marne France on December 11, 1836. In the 18th century, it was important that kids start a career at an early age. At the age of 14, Prevost's parents placed him as an apprentice at a trellis manufacturer on Rue Saint-Jacques in Paris. During this time as an apprentice, young Victor Joseph Prevost was treated harshly. He was sleeping on a bed without a mattress, and had to work as much as an adult. Prevost's boss brutalized him and, to punish him for his bulimia, which he mistook for simple greed, reduced his daily food portions. Bulimia is an eating disorder characterized by periods of fatigue, followed by unhealthy behaviors for rapid weight loss, caffeine abuse, cocaine use and or inappropriate diets. Then, hungry, Prevost stole a piece of bread, but was caught and punished by being struck with a whip reserved for the dog. That same evening, while Prevost helped his employer to put up fences over a small yard, he made it swing through a frame whose piece of glass plowed his hands and face. From that moment, Prevost had only one idea in mind, to escape his ordeal. Growing up as a teenager, Victor Joseph Prevost was known to be a kind-hearted person. He will go beyond his means to help other people. One day, while running an errand for his boss, Prevost saw the cart of a milkman hit a boy of his age carrying a rack full of meat. While the milkman ran away, Prevost helped the young victim get up and, finding that the boy was no longer in shape to resume his service, he loaded the heavy piece of meat on his head effortlessly and then delivered it to its recipient. This incident gave him the idea of his Herculean strength, while he was still a teenager. From a kind-hearted teen Victor Joseph Prevost, grew up to be a brutal adult, while working as a butcher, Prevost was suddenly taken with a passion for the bloody universe he discovered then. In the butcher shop the workers were cutting up the animals, that had just been slaughtered and it was a debauchery of cut flesh and blood. Prevost was fascinated and couldn't help himself but participate in the carnage. He took a knife and, although a novice, cut off a shred of veal. He quickly learned how to butcher animals, and became an expert in skinning and debonning. He loved the smell of blood, and seemed to experience a real pleasure to handle meat. The female servants quickly becoming attracted to the handsome apprentice. The women working with Victor Prevost, started to fall for him. The women were all throwing themselves at him. There was chaos at the shop, which resulted to violent and jealousies. Soon which resulting in Prevost's dismissal. Shortly after, he found work in a school on Rue Saint-Honoré. As soon as he arrived, he again began to be swarmed by female attention, which earned him the nickname The Handsome Man among his colleagues. His work at the school was brief. Prevost was enlisted as a conscript for a six-year military service on April 11, 1855, replacing his older brother. He was incorporated into the 4th Cuirassiers Regiment before moving on October 14, 1856 to the 2nd Cuirassier Regiment of the Imperial Guard and the 12th Cuirassier Regiment, with whom he participated in the Italian campaign for which he received the commemorative medal. On December 31, 1861, he was released and given a certificate of good conduct. Victor Joseph Prevost, the former butcher, seemed to be fascinated and loved working in the service, which made his return to civilian life short. He signed a seven-year-old contract on October 14, 1862 and returned to the 2nd Regiment. Because of his experience with the Cuirassiers, his good service and height of six feet, at the time, the average size of men was about five foot five inches. He entered the very strict recruitment criteria of the prestigious Scent Guard Squadron that he joined on January 20, 1866. 
From the army to the police, Victor Prévost was hired by the municipal police in Paris from July 1, 1869. His crime spree started on September 10, 1879, at about 8 o'clock in the evening. Madame Thierry, a resident of the district which was deserted at this hour, saw at the corner of the Rue de la Chapelle and Rue du Pré modded the tall figure of a man, dressed in a cattle driver's gown and a silk cap, leaning over the stream that passed there. He watched him from a distance and ended up seeing him walk away towards Ney Boulevard. Madame Thierry cautiously approached the place he abandoned and discovered, half stuck in a manhole, a packet containing freshly cut meat. The witnesses contacted what they saw and described the man they saw placing the flesh of meat on the streets. During the police investigation, there was immediately undertaken and 77 additional pieces of flesh were discovered, three of which were recovered from a rag picker who was about to sell them for consumption. Other parts, including a hand and the parts of a person who belongs to the male sex, were found in a ditch near the fortifications near the Potter and Depot Isoniers. At the Paris morgue, where the pieces were transferred, efforts were made to reconstitute the body of the victim by reassembly, as to when they were discovered, that still remained a secret. In the end, only the head was missing, as well as a piece that could never be found because a poor man had probably picked up it carefully, packaged it, like a piece of veal falling from the net of a housewife, cooked it in his hut and enjoyed it with the family. The victim was later identified as Alexander Lenoble. Alexander Lenoble was a 38-year-old jewelry broker who had just recently established his own business. He left behind a widow and two children, aged 11 and 6. The second known victim of Victor Prévost was Adèle Blondin. Blondin was the mistress of Victor Prévost. Adèle Blondin had a sum of 30,000 francs which an old rich friend left for her. On Sunday, February 27, 1876, she went to lunch at Prévost's house, who at the time lived at 22 Rue de l'Evangile, in front of the police station where he worked. Her landlady saw her leaving, adorned with her jewels and wrapped with a Scottish shawl. The connection was obvious. The objects, jewels and clothes of the disappeared especially her Scottish shawl, were found at Prevost's home. At first he had claimed that she had forgotten her umbrella, but took her shawl. When confronted with overwhelming evidence, he began denying the claims, saying that they were gifts from Blondin and that he was mistaken in stating that he had taken her shawl. When brought to his former home on Rudy Levangil where Blondin had been seen for the last time, the discovery of blood droplets led Prévost to confess his crime. In early October, following the discovery of Prévost's second murder, a rumor spread of a third possible crime. Prévost is suspected of having previously murdered another peacekeeper, who disappeared without a trace four years before, an act which he categorically denied. To put an end to an inquiry with uncertain results that promised to be long, while the authorities wanted to finish quickly, he was made to write a written statement in which he expressed his repentance for his two confirmed crimes. Prevost swore that if he was guilty of anything, he would confess without hesitation. Victor Prevost's trial was held before the court assizes insane, chaired by Mr. Harduin and two assessors, on December 7, 1879. At quarter past eleven, the accused entered, accompanied by eight guards. The defense was provided by Mr. Bouchet, while the Attorney General was Mr. Lefebvre de Beefville. While reading through the indictment, which included details and the way in which the two murders were committed, Prevost stood upright and remained calm, but his discouragement could be felt. He then answered questions from the judge who made him confirm the facts and clarify details. It was then when the witnesses were called, 
confirming the depositions made during the instruction. Then following the indictment, during which Prevost seemed to accuse the police of a cover-up, and pleaded to his lawyer. After a summary of the debates by the judge, the jury met to deliberate and answer all the questions posed in just 20 minutes. The court then withdrew to establish their verdict before pronouncing, unsurprisingly, the death sentence against Victor Prevost for crimes of premeditated murder. During the statement, he showed no emotion. The day after his trial, on December 9, 1879 in the afternoon, Prevost was transferred to the La Roquette Grand Prison, a unique detention center in which death row inmates were executed since 1851. January 19, 1880, at the age of 43, on the scheduled date and time, Prevost was executed publicly in front of the prison, in the freezing cold. The weather was minus 5 degrees Celsius it had previously snowed. And two huge snow mounts surrounded the square, plunging into near darkness. Since 6 o'clock in the morning, a hundred Republican guards, 50 horsemen, and 300 peacekeepers had taken their places to keep at a distance those who had come to watch the execution. Warned that his execution would take place at 6.30. Prevost was asked to put on a white shirt, which he refused, and to keep his slippers on, because the boots would hurt his feet. He obeyed all the preparatory procedures for implementation, and walked worthily to the scaffold. Between his identification as the murderer and his execution, it took a little more than four months. He was buried at Ivory Cemetery located in the neighboring town of Ivory sur Seine in Val de Marne, less than 500 meters outside Paris's intramural area. Thank you for watching Death Row.